Here we go. Okay. So we're going to kind of bounce back and forth between these two screens. And what we're going to do is kind of talk about when you're bringing someone on board, just kind of that verbiage to really get them started off strong. Now, the exciting thing is, is not too long ago, they rolled out, corporate rolled out with an incredible onboarding program. I mean, we've all tried to kind of do it ourselves, and it's evolved, but this one, hands down, is phenomenal. And so we want to get as good as we can walking through our new partners through this process. But there's also some verbiage and conversation that we, as this new person's upline, we want to get good at really communicating with them. And we want them to step into um, becoming a partner with unbelievable confidence. And so what I'm going to do is just kind of walk us through an outline. If you want this outline, I'll, I'll post it. I'll send it out. Um, but I think as I went through, I was thinking about four, um, four C's to really grow a successful partner. I always have to think of things that I can remember. So four C's is kind of easy to remember. So tonight we're going to go from partner to partner plus and the four C's to help get that new partner off to a successful start. And then next week we'll go from partner plus to QSC with four more C's on getting them to that success as well. So before I even would dive into going through this onboarding process, I do wanna take some time with this person and really talk about commitment. And when I think, I want you guys to think back when you signed on as a partner, think about what you were thinking at that time. I can specifically remember, I wasn't communicating this to Judy Blue, my upline, I didn't really say a whole lot to her, but in my heart, literally, as I signed that dotted line, I was thinking, I don't want this just to be a hobby. I want to make some money because I just quit my job. We'd lost 50% of our income and I wanted, to, I wanted to be home with my girls, but I wanted to, I wanted to bring money to the bottom line. And so I remember signing that thinking, by gosh, I'm going to make this successful. I'm going to make some money at this or I'm going to die trying. And that's what you want that person to feel like inside. They may not say it, but we want to get them to that level. And I think so many times we sell people short by saying well, we can do as little or as much as we want. And that is the beautiful thing about this business. But we want people that make a decision to jump in this business head first and really go after this business. And so I think having that conversation, share with them what you felt and help them make a commitment that they're gonna go after this. They're gonna build, they're gonna build their dreams um, with what this business can do. We have an unbelievable opportunity and they need to feel that what they're getting is something pretty powerful when they sign the dotted line on this, on for this um, business. The second commitment, I want to encourage this new person and I want you guys to do the same, is to get them committed to the process. Our Juice Plus company has produced many, and I'm not kidding, many millionaires. The process works. The question is, are we willing to step into the process that's laid out? A lot of times I'll see people come on board and they will literally try to reinvent the wheel. They want to do it their own way. I'm here to tell you it works. And we have every step of the way, this new partner is going to have what they need to be successful. And so we want to give them confidence. They have what it takes and, and commit to this process. And then the last thing is really helping them understand that commitment to taking action. Um, anytime I see someone who will say, oh my goodness, I can't get, I can't build a business. Every time when we kind of peel back the layers of the onion, it really gets down to the point, they are not taking action. They're not talking to people. 
We get paid to talk to people and find out what their need is and then see how Juice Plus can meet that need. And if we're not seeing our businesses grow, it's because we're not taking action and talking to people. And so what we want to do is right off the bat, help them understand it. I would rather somebody touch this business 15, 20, 30 minutes a day, every single day, than someone who works it really hard and then lays it down for a month. It's that consistency of action that is going to produce momentum. And we want them right out of the gate to have that momentum. So if I'm looking at this onboarding, go to the right side of the screen. Give me a thumbs up. I can see Brenda and Letty. You can see both dual, dual screens. OK, great. Um, getting started, don't skip over this first point right here. Where, it, where it's talking about what's their why. Take a little time. I don't know if you're like me, but I'm an impatient person. And I want to get right into the bones of it and tell them how to do it. And that's not good. So don't follow after me. Do, do exactly how this onboarding is set up. And dig in with this person. Find out their why. Because I think, you know, sometimes I think maybe people don't quite know why they're doing it. They may be just excited because you invited them, but we want to dig deep and find out what is their why. Um, if I look at all these points and I think back to when I started, I probably could check every one of those boxes off. I wanted to stay home with my kids. I wanted to cut back on my work. I love to travel and I'm married to someone who likes to even travel more. Um, I wanted to bring money to the bottom line. I was a financial planner and I knew the value of multiple streams of income coming in. And what you wanna do is process with this person and see if the more whys they can come up with, the stronger it's gonna be for them to want to do this business. So don't cut this short, make sure you listen. This is a video, five minute video from Jennifer Myers, who is a like a 100 plus 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 club person in our company and she's sharing just working through the why with your new partner um one thing that i didn't say that i want to share is we want to what we're kind of teaching these new partners we're bringing on we want to make sure personally we are living up to what we're asking them to do and that we are committed and, and when I look at that is, am I committed to the decision I made? Or have, have, have I kind of lost that decision that I'm going to go all the way? I'm going to go to national marketing director. Let's go for it. So let's make sure we have the commitment that we're asking these new people to have as well. The next thing is, you know, what we're going to do is go ahead and go with them online and set them up as a partner. And you can see right here, we click that button, it'll take us to um, our virtual office and we can immediately sign them up as a new partner. And I think it's always good. A lot of people love to jump in and do things for themselves. That's good that you got yourself a self-motivated self person. But I think it, it's, it's good for us to walk through each of these steps with them. The next thing, when I get to this point here where it comes to placing their order, I kind of circle back around to that and I'll come down here under the partner overview. And what I want them to see is how easy it is to have success in this business. So I will take them right to this page. And so I start talking about the 900 points it takes to hit the first goal. And what does that 900 points represent? And then we talk about maybe they're already a customer and you're converting them to a partner. They may already be on the trio. So I talk about a little bit about the trio. Hopefully they're already familiar with the product itself. You've already had the conversations. So I start talking to them about the 300 points for a trio. And so to hit that first goal is only three trios, three people. Who do you know? So first and foremost, obviously you want them to be their very first customer and either convert 
their, their current order over to them, or hopefully it's time for their new order to ship out and then they are their first customer. Then we talk about who are the other two people you're gonna sign up. So here's where I talk about, and maybe you guys have heard this statement before, the move the body friends. Who are your move the body friends? And what do I mean by that? So picture yourself in a dark alley right now. You've got a dead person laying at your feet. Everybody scrams and you are the one holding the bag. It looks like you're at fault. Who are you going to call? That's your move the body kind of friends. Who are the people who you literally could pick up the phone and say, I need you now. Show up at the dark alley and help me move the body. And who are, help that person think of that move the body person that they can call. And I remember the first person I thought about was my mom. And I remember calling my mom and saying, mom, here's what we're doing. Here's why we're doing it. I think you're going to love Juice Plus. Can I go ahead and get your order placed? She was like, honey, if you think it's good for you, order it for me. You know, I knew my mom. I knew she'd be there. My dad was a harder sell. Took me seven years to get my dad on Juice Plus. So make sure you help process those move the body kind of people. Because really what you want to do is when you sign them up, you want them to be ready to go with three trios or, you know, come down here and kind of process their move the body people. What are they going to want? What do you think they want, need? What do you want to talk to them about? And what's their need and how can you share Juice Plus with them? And we're going to get more into that later. But you want them experiencing success right off the bat so that I guarantee you, if they feel that success and know, oh my goodness, that's not hard to get to that first level, then that's what you want to immediately do with them is get them. You want to pour your confidence into them. And I remember Judy blew my upline. I just remember her saying, Elaine, if you need to share my story, my success, you do it till you feel like your success is where it is. And I remember I, I literally wrote on Judy Blue's confidence for a long time until my business grew and I had that confidence in myself. So do that with your upline. And as an upline, bringing on someone new, we want to breathe an amazing amount of confidence in these people because we know they can do it, but they don't know that yet. All right, so we kind of walk through. Then the next thing would we, we're going to do is go ahead and place their order. Or maybe it's, okay, let's come back in um, three or four days when you've got two more orders and you're ready to hit that first goal and then let's sign them up. And then we'd come back here and place their order for them. So sometimes I may, if they're here in my office with me, I may send them away with enough Juice Plus to get them going. And then we circle back around once they've got their three people ready to sign up. So the next thing on, on this getting started and taking them through the onboarding process, we get down here to the key videos. And so going back, and I'm going to flip back and forth. I hope I won't make you dizzy. Going back to our outline here, we talked about commitment, the four C's. First is commitment. The second one, and this is where I take some time and really talk to them about how do you go about connecting with people? Some people you're going to talk to, man, they're literally, before you even get to this point, they got a piece of paper and they're writing down names. I love, love it when I get someone like that. But just because someone's not there yet doesn't mean everything we do is a skill. And so if they don't come to the table with a skill, we know they can learn it. It's just up to, up to us to help them know what to do. And so we want to make sure they know how to connect with people. So when I think about the second C connection, how do we got to, we may have to help them figure out how do you find people? Where do I go? Who do I talk to? Well, here's four categories that instantly I think about. Number one is calendar. I first would take them to my calendar and literally start looking at my calendar and saying, okay, last week, here's who I talked to. And so I'm looking at my calendar. I went and had blood work. So I talked to the lady who was taking my blood and 
what was the conversation? My blood was flowing out really quickly. And I started telling her about the berry blend and how the berry blend, how great it is for cardiovascular disease. And that's why she was like, dang, your blood's coming out fast. So it just like, boom, opened up a conversation. Um, I'm meeting up with, a, I had a tenant who was moving out of one of my rentals and I got talking to her um, yesterday when I was doing a walkthrough. And I said, what are you doing now? Cause she, she used to be a realtor. She goes, I don't know. I'm looking at getting into health, the health industry, health and wellness industry. Ding, 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 ding. I said, oh my goodness, let's right now get a time on the calendar. Let's get coffee. So we're getting coffee. And I started telling her about juice plus last night. I, my husband and I are marriage mentors and for, through our church. And we met the cutest couple last night, took them to dinner. She goes, what do you do? And I said, oh my goodness, I love that question. So I start telling her about Juice Plus. So when you teach this new person to look at their calendar, look at all the people they're seeing, that's the best place to start with talking to people. I got my hair done last Friday. There was a lady at the salon, talk to her about Juice Plus. Help them see that first off, just look at your calendar. The second thing there is groups. What groups of people, what groups are you involved in? And literally I would get them to just pick up a notebook and literally start making a page for calendar. Who's on your calendar for groups? Um, another thing is seasons of life. Who'd you go to college with? Who'd you go to high school with? You know, thinking about seasons of life will start triggering people that you want to connect with. The next thing is talk to him about relationships. Um, I think about when I think about relationships, a lot of my customers are actually friends of my mom and dad. A lot of my customers are people my husband work with. So help process with them relationships. And the next thing, how do you make a list? So when you get them, whether you create a list for, you know, help them create a list by thinking through who, what, when, and where, and literally have them write that across the top. So not only are we just helping them think about who to connect with, but then we want to think about how do they go about connecting with those people? You know, what are you going to say to them? And I'm going to show you where we go for those tools. When are you going to connect with them? Make sure that you're getting a, an appointment with them on your calendar, whether it be appointment on the phone, whether it be meeting up with coffee, whether it be doing a Zoom. And then the last thing when it comes to connecting is how do you go about connecting? Where are you going to connect with them? Are you going to connect with them in person? You're going to invite them to an event. You know, right there, I'd stop right there with them. And I would literally pull out your calendars and line up an event, whether it's a virtual event or a live event for that person. Get, a, get an event on the calendar right off the bat with them. Um, talk to them, you know, are you going to connect with, with these people on social media, in person, send them something? And then come back over here to this onboarding process. It, uh, I'm sorry, I kind of jumped in. In case you don't know where I am, I'm at thefreedomrevolution.com. Then you go to getting started. And then the password is welcome, all lowercase. So what we've done so far is we have walked them through their why. We've helped them place the order or have a time on the calendar when we're going to get back with them when they've got their three customers already lined up. We've done an overview of what it's going to take to hit that first goal. Now, what I would do is spend some time and watch a couple of these videos with them. These are some of the most what the most used videos that we that we share with people. Um, so we've we've already made a list. Now we're kind of talking about what, what are we going to send to people and walk them through. You know, what I always like to do is kind of challenge them is to say, take 15 minutes at night, you get in bed, you got your phone, you're about ready to put your alarm on, watch a couple of videos. Because when you watch these videos, what's going to happen is 
it's going to trigger person after person after person. Ooh, this person, that, what is it, Emma Buckley? She looks like so-and-so. Ooh, I need to reach out to her. Or, oh, I was talking to someone the other day about omegas. You know, you're going to start people just watching those videos are going to help them build their list. Um, the next thing is, is then what is it that you want? What, what do they need to say to people? They're going to be a little nervous. Okay, so here's a tool I can reach out to them with a video. Um, but what am I going to say to them? And so that's going to be, here's a couple of ways. Let me, let me jump back over to our um, outline and take a little bit of time and help them process those conversations. What conversations are you going to have with them? I don't know, but I just got to give a big shout out to Stacy Whitmer, who introduced me, all of us, to the consistency chain. And if you're not getting a consistency chain message every day, let one of us know because it is a brilliant idea when it comes to helping people come up with verbiage for conversation. And so what you're getting is every day, Stacy put together these text messages with verbiage. And so what we're doing is sending them out every day. You're getting a reminder to connect with people and you're getting the actual verbiage that you can turn around and use. So that right there is something awesome for a brand new person to get started with that every day, they're gonna get a message with verbiage that they can use. The next thing is the freedom revolution. In this onboarding process, look right here. We can click here and what it's gonna do, there's a video and I would take some time, watch the short video, and then just start talking about, look at all this verbiage and examples of what you can say and you can share this with this new partner. So now we've got two ways we can get verbiage. On the onboarding process, just clicking on that button. And then back to our outline, just being on this call, the fact that you guys are on the call tonight, you're going to hear verbiage sprinkled throughout every one of the training. I know Letty and Stacy have um, trainings that every Monday night as well, that they're going to have verbiage on. Linda Gardner has two events a week with training. I mean, it, there are so many ways, so many different team trainings you can jump on. And that, in addition, is going to build that confidence and it's also going to give you exactly what you need. All right. So walk through, take them through that process of helping them know where to get verbiage. So we've, we've talked about the three C's. Number one, walk through the commitment. Number two, um, teach them how to connect, where to connect. Number three, help them with the conversation piece making sure they know where to get that verbiage and they feel confident. If they don't feel confident, then offer to be on the calls with them for a while so they can hear you in action. Some people may need it, some people may not, but we want them having so much confidence that whatever they do, they are breathing confidence because people are attracted to people who are confident and we want them confident. The last thing, the last C, is um, consistency. We've been talking about now for um, starting in June with this consistency change, July, and it's gonna go all the way into August, is how do we teach these brand new people and hold ourselves accountable when it comes to being consistent? Um, so number one, get people on the consistency chain because that thing is fabulous of just reminding people to stay engaged. But what we want to teach these brand new people is touch your business every single day. Touch your business every single day. I'd rather have someone who did 30 minutes a day, maybe made a couple phone calls, than someone who worked at eight hours a day and then set it aside. Because if they work it every day, it's going to build momentum and it's going to build confidence. And then 
the next thing, and Letty taught me this. Thank you, Letty. I use it and I talk about it all the time. On my phone at 11 o'clock and two o'clock, I have a reminder. At 11 o'clock, it reminds me to reach out to new people. And at two o'clock, it reminds me to reach out to my customers. And I have to consciously think, okay, I'm not going to do what that reminder is telling me to do. So it really holds me accountable. So encourage your new person somehow, some way to be consistent. And then the last thing is encourage them to be on these calls because being part of this community is going to help people naturally be consistent. I look at people, I'm looking at some names right now, and I'm thinking, the, these, this person who's coming to mind right now, she was very shy when she came into this business. But what I have seen is her consistently show up to these trainings, consistently, consistently show up to virtual events, live events. And I am telling you what this person who I'm thinking about right now is turning into an incredible, incredible partner in our business. And you know what it is? It's because she is consistent. And back to what I was saying earlier, everything we do is a skill. And everybody can learn a skill. We can learn it. What's that book? It was like a thousand hours. I forget the name of the book. That if you invest a thousand hours in anything, you will become a, a professional at it. And that holds true for our business. But the hard part is not learning the skills. The hard part is the consistency. And if we can help right out of the gate, these new partners how, learn how to be consistent and give them some tools to help them do that, they're going to be phenomenal. They will be phenomenal in this business. And we want them literally to start out right out of the gate being successful. And so walking them through just these, the, the four C's of getting, growing this partner to partner plus, as well as walking them through this incredible onboarding process. Look at that, I forgot to hit social media. They even, you know, showing them how to connect with people on social media. Click here. This literally is, literally is, is, is success. We just need to walk them through it and then teach them those four C's. And you're going to have yourself an incredible partner on your hands. All right, I'm going to shut up because I, I am really bad when it comes to talking way too much. I want to hear from you guys. We have a great group on here. Let me hear from somebody on here who says, okay, I brought on a new partner. I feel good. I feel great about my new partner, but here's a question I have, or here's what I did that I feel like really got that person off to a strong start. Maybe I've missed some things along the way. So I want to hear from some of you guys. Anybody got something a, a hack that they've developed when onboarding a new person that they want to share with us. All right, Stacy, have at it. Did you think I wasn't going to have a hack? I, I, I was looking that. right at you. So I thought <laughs> she's got, I know she's going to have something for us. So this is how I feel about onboarding. I think it is so, so important that we keep it simple. Like Elaine said, it's so important that we keep it simple. And what I've been doing that seems to be working well is I take them worksheet by worksheet, mm -hmm. literally, I, you know, so someone signs up, I, I email them or I send, they go into freedom rev, depending on if I'm with them or not. Um, if I'm with them, I, if I'm physically going to be with them, I have the worksheet printed out and I bring it there in a hard copy and we write down on the back who they're going to reach out to. We do some reach outs physically in person right there. Um, and then we start filling it in as she gets orders, right? As he or she gets orders. So then once that partner plus worksheet is done, we then print out and go to the next worksheet. So I think sometimes when we say yes to something, we get so excited and so just, we want to be all in that. It's almost like we're drinking from a fire hose. 
that the resources are so much and we've got so many things coming at us that it can sometimes make us hesitate and think, oh wait, this is too much. We choose the too much. If they want more, then we can give them resources and things to show them more. But otherwise, I've just been going worksheet by worksheet. That is it. I had someone hit QSC in six days and she is now like 200 points from qualifying her business for the first time. And we went worksheet by worksheet. And now I have a qualifiers worksheet that I made for her. So she's just filling out those points, you know? So it literally just makes it simple. The, the images are there, the points are there. It's just easy, right? So give people worksheet by worksheet and let them let help, let um, have you, you know, help them, help them, help them navigate those worksheets so that they're not doing it on their own without, without your help. So that's one thing that I do. That's been really, that's been really effective for me. I agree 100%. I, I'm a worksheet person anyway, but I absolutely love the worksheets. It just makes it it's simple. They can go back to it. Um, any, any other, we got, I know you guys got some good tips and, and thoughts and, or maybe questions. Let me hear from you. Let me see. I'm looking. Come on. I can't be the only one. Me and Stacey can't be the only two people like to talk. Letty, are you raising your hand or were you fixing your computer? I wasn't raising my hand, but I'll, I'll chat. I, I'll just chime in real quick. Um, events. It's really so important to book an event and have something people can invite to. And I think the beauty of that is that then your new person gets to hear you speak about Juice Plus. I'm like, what is it all about? And how do I speak about it? And how do I answer questions? And so they get to learn by watching you. And it's the simplest, easiest way to do it. And I love, I love, there was a comment that you made with, when I, I'm glad that you brought up events. And the reason is, is the easiest verbiage to learn is to send someone an invite and invite them to something. I mean, everybody knows how to invite somebody to something. Um, and so that is a quick verbiage or conversation that someone can have off the bat. That's the easiest way to step into. So having an event lined up is huge. Yeah, and they think right. it takes the fear away a little bit. Like they're like, what am I supposed to say? And then they see you do it and you're like, oh, that's it, I could do that. I think yeah. it helps that way too, yeah. Yeah, events. I love it. Andrea, were you going to say something? Yeah, I will say that when I started, and I know we don't do this a lot now, but I feel like we definitely should be getting back into it. We set up a Facebook launch. So mm -hmm. while we're introducing all the, the education and such behind all these great products to this person's family and friends, making it really simple, they're learning themselves. I remember in my own launch, I was like post after post, I was becoming more and more excited because of how like it, just excited I was at, and proud that this was something that I was sharing with everybody. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Andrea. Go, go when you're saying a Facebook launch, go a little bit deeper with that. So it was an event that the hostess, so the new, the new rep would set up and invite all their friends and family. And then Stacy would post, like for me, you know, Stacy posted all of the information. It was set up in like 12 posts, breaking down everything, the products, the, the research behind it, what fruits and vegetables do for us. And it just got everybody excited. But again, it got the rep really excited that, and proud to be sharing this. So, it, and it helped them get comfortable with verbiage for the future. You know what? I forgot. I forgot. I remember doing several of those and you're right. It's incredible verbiage. Good point. Um, to that point too. I just wanted to throw that out there. I, I love that Andrea. And actually I'm setting one up right now uh, for the new person I added earlier this month, but I'll tell you that, you know, I call it live learning. I think it's so important that people hear what we have to say so that they can feel confident to do it themselves too. And the, those events are great because they're learning as we're posting and sharing and watching those videos. But the other piece that's really been helpful is those three-way calls. Mm -hmm. I, guys, I know that we talk about this and, and like, I didn't do, and I, I have never done one through a three-way call. I've always done the conversations by myself, um, but I do a lot for my team and my new girl, uh, I have two new girls that um, are hitting goals very quickly. I am on three-way calls with people in their life at least two or three times a day. Hey girl, do you have 15 minutes? Can you hop on with me in this one? Hey girl, do you have 10 minutes for me? She wants to ask you a question. And that conversation, what is happening? Live learning, right? She's hearing me. 
And this, this week I've had less because now she's comfortable to do it. Um, I'm stepping in for a few, but now she's comfortable and confident. She knows what to say and how to say it. I did probably 30 of them for her in the first six days. I'm not even kidding. So that's a really good piece too, right? The events so you can learn and listen and the live learning through the three-way calls. Yeah, I was going to say that. I was going to piggyback on that because Stace knows we have, I don't think she's on here, Stace. Is Diane on here? We have um, my girl, Diane, who's rocking this business and she's just a full-time worker as well. So we have probably six to seven three-way conversations. And I know Stacy was saying calls, but for her, we do them all through messenger and we voice through those. And let me tell you guys, it is game changer because I can chime in and send, you know, talk about all the information when that prospect, that prospect has questions. Even if it's a new person we're setting up, we just did that this morning at like 6 a.m. We were chatting with her, setting a new person up, you know, filling in the gaps and she's, she's in it. I'm in it. Her new rep is in it. And I agree with Stacy for, you know, for it's game changer when you have that third party and they can learn as they go. So, yep. Love it. Okay. I'm writing down the tips. So I'll we'll pass these out. Um, Karen, Karen, I see Karen Farrell's hand up. Yeah. I, I was just going to add, um, speaking of Facebook, uh, I always invite my new members and, and all of my team to go to the recordings page or the juice plus ex let's exchange ideas. And I ask them to just listen one to one call a day. Some of them are five minutes, some are eight, some are 30, but you know, do it while you're walking, do it while you're getting ready. You know, that's when I listen to them is in the morning. Every morning I'll listen to one that I'll send it on to my team if I find it pertinent or I send it on to customers that I think need to hear it. So I think those, those tools that we have are just amazing. And we, again, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. It's already there for us and we just forward it on. And that's how they're going to learn the verbiage as well. Excellent point, because I, I remember being new and that very same thing happened and you start talking and something rolls out and you're like, oh my gosh, where did that come from? And it's because exactly what you're saying, Karen, you're listening. All right, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to put all these hacks down and, and we'll record them. Let's see, I think Mara, let's see, did I see Mara raising her hand? Is she on here or is she gone? Did we lose her? No, I'm still here. Oh, there you are. It's like I'm <laughs> trying to find everybody. So I was like, I know I saw her raise her hand. What? Let, let you know what? I know you got something really exciting that you're doing and seeing huge. Okay, I got it. I'll do a little bragging on her. She went the the very month, the first month she qualified her business. How was that? You went. You went to 3,400 points. And the very first month that you qualified your business and share, I don't know if you're going to share what you're going, what you're doing, but it's pretty <laughs> impressive. That's for sure. Well, um, so my, my thing was I, I wanted to, um, and I think I told you from the beginning, I wanted to talk to groups of people as opposed to one to one individuals. And so, um, I started a program in which I actually help people to do um, something very similar to the shred, but it's, it's a lot broader. So it's not just about eating and um, you know, doing just the principles of the shred. It's really showing them how the nutritional value of the shred impacts every area of your wellness. So, um, so we, we take um, time to look at every area of wellness and actually show them how if you don't get good nutrition, how is it's actually just going to kind of like a domino? It's just going to affect. It affects your social skills. It affects your intellectual learning. It affects your your um, um, your environmental health. It affects you know. It affects everything about you um, because when we're not eating well, we're not really getting those nutrients. Then our our brain doesn't work well. We don't feel physically well. We don't communicate well. Right. Um, we, it, it just affects everything. So, um, so I wanted to teach people how to really look at their entire wellness, not just, um, the principles of the shred. And so I, that, that's, that's what we're doing. And so we're, we're incorporating the shred in, but, um, it, it's not like 
and, and I put it this way, Juice Plus is not a required item but when you use it, you get better results. And what happens is it takes the pressure off of me to try to sell it to them. But at the same time, it makes them curious about, well, how is it gonna get me better results? You know, and so they start asking me, so what, um, tell me about those whole food capsules that help me to get better results. And tell me about those shakes, you know, that help me to gently detox my body. And tell me about those, you know, so I, I don't like selling. I have never liked it, but, taking the pressure off of me to, to push something and actually just now learn how to start a conversation and create a curiosity without, you know, actually um, forward, you know, forward selling um, has worked really well for me. And people now start to inquire rather than me try to have to, you know, kind of go after people for it. So, um, but, but the one thing that has helped, I agree with, um, I think it was Letty that said, um, events. Mm -hmm. Events have really helped me to help my team because um, as I'm helping these groups of people that they're actually now, these, my team members are actually inviting people to. Um, so I actually, since December, I have not invited one person to any of my groups, mm -hmm. group sessions. And I've gotten at least each time I've done a session, I had a hundred people at each session. <laughs> So, <laughs> you know, and then um, from that, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, it, it's, it's been really less stress for me, <laughs> I have to say, because, you know, but, but I host the events. So I'll do the events and I'll let my team members invite the people to the events. And then as, you know, as they come to the events and they're inquiring, well, then we refer them back to, to, to the teammate that, um, you know, that has invited them so, um, so and that you, they get the customers. And you know what I'm hearing, you're probably not even thinking you're saying, but what I'm hearing, and I think is a great, what time is it? We probably need to close it out. But what I'm hearing from you, Mara, is you are walking the talk and people are following your example. And I think as bring onboarding new people, our team's gonna do what we're doing. And if, if we're not seeing people move, it's probably because we're not moving. And so I love, I love the fact of, of what you just shared. And I know you weren't even thinking of it, but it was a perfect example of if we want to build and grow a large team, then we have to set the pace and our team will follow. So thank you for that, that great uh, exiting uh, comments there. I, I could go on and we can continue to talk, but I don't want to, I want to keep these as short kind of to the point. Um, but guys, thank you for coming tonight and